Hallelujah. Well, let's love the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let's praise him. Come on, lift up your hands and your voice to the Lord. Let him hear from you today. We need you, Jesus. Woo, we need you, Jesus. Oh, yes, come on. Come on, let's reach after him. God, we need your power and your spirit. Oh, your help, Jesus. Victory today, victory today. Name of the Lord. God bless you. you. May be seated. It is an honor to be with you, good people, and your fine pastor and his family. You know, boards are very awkward to be on. And the number one problem with a board is not biblical. That's the truth. It's not biblical, and I know that, and he knows that, so it really makes it awkward. And uh, he's sitting down trying to tell me what y'all are doing, and I really don't care except it sounds victorious to me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. But America seems to care, and the government wants it set up a certain way, and it is a safe thing for the church to have men that can come in. And, and I've got good men on our board that co has come in and helped us from time to time. But I want to tell you something. What really, what God is reaching for is a man to come into a city and a church to get behind the man. Amen. A man is a fool. A man is a fool to be an island unto himself and not be able to submit. But you can spot those kind of guys because they usually don't have revival. Amen. But men, like your good pastor, he has a pastor. I'm definitely not him. I'm not the pastor. Amen. And I, somebody told, told him when dad started in Guy, he started with nothing. It was just mom and dad and I. And uh, we had a handful of people, and dad began to preach the doctrine. And they said, we're going to call Brother Holmes. He's too young, and he's too cocky, and, and uh, too full of himself. And the problem with that was dad heard that when he was walking on the platform. God gave him a vision. He fell to his face. Everybody's singing and playing, and and uh, I don't know why I'm saying all this, but he, he had a vision right there, and he heard everything stop, and he heard which one said what, and he just got up there and told them, and I uh, said, well, I'm going to tell you all something. You're not firing me. He said, we'll just, we're going to keep building, and thank God that a preacher will oppose any kind of spirit. Man, that's the kind of man I want in my corner. That's the kind of guy you can trust that'll bow up to the devil and say, you're not running things in hot springs. Look what God has done. Oh, look what the Lord has done. Ooh, hallelujah. I rejoice with you all. What a great day it is to be able to announce that you all have land. And I'm telling you, you need a building and you need one pretty fast. It's time to get to work more than you've ever worked. Give more than you ever gave. Amen. That's the only way to build a church. I remember when we were paying off our building and men started starting their own businesses and God started blessing right in the middle of a project, right in the middle of someone getting a goal. My dad, before I become pastor, he got a goal and he put up on the board as Mount Mortgage. And a few guys that owned their business, maybe one or two, and... Uh, they still, still was struggling, and when Mount Mortgage started, people started stepping out in faith. We've seen more miracles through people giving. Now, many of our men are business owners and successful. Why? Because where there is a vision, people get up and they go forward. Where there is no vision, people perish. They go backward. And but the vision comes through the pulpit. Thank God for saints to get a hold of the vision. Thank you, Brother Moats, for this opportunity to be here. Good to see my young friend, Brother Moats. He's not that much younger than me, but I look at them. They don't have children. Just got married not too long ago, or it seems like not too long ago. I go by children now instead of years. I said, now, which baby was born? And that was four kids, and then the fifth one come and doubled itself, and it's twins. So... Um, 
we had to talk to the doctor, and uh, I don't know how you trust a guy to stop things that's getting money to deliver babies, but talked to him, and he laughed at me. He always told me that I needed to be in the cool club and have four kids like him, and I did, and now I have more than him, and he stopped, and so, but I, I go by kids, and so I don't know how long y'all been married, a couple years, two years, it could be five years for all I know, can't be that long, I don't think. But, uh, man, they're doing a great work in Amity, Arkansas. God help. I'm going to tell you, when God gets ready to do a work, he does it quickly. It may not always seem quick to him because he's in the battle, and it may not seem like y'all just built this church overnight. I know it hasn't been that way, but it seems like it to me. I come in here, and I see the goodness of God. It's worth the battle. It's worth fighting every battle, fighting every devil to see people come in, repent at an altar, and get the Holy Ghost. Man, I'm just rambling today. I'm not trying to ramble, but I feel good in my spirit about what's going on in Hot Springs. I really do. I feel like God is right in the middle of what's going on with the most. He's going to lead this man, and he's, he's going to lead you. Y'all are going to link up together. Y'all are already linked together, but I'm telling you, something great's about to happen. There's going to be a new vision. The land's just the starting. Oh, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. You can take it as a prophetic word. This is just the start of great things in hot springs. You need to link up. You need to quit playing around. Make up your mind. I'm living for God. I'm going all the way. I'm not playing around. Oh, there's victory today. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Oh, hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. My God, I feel a challenge. For young brother Moats today, I know things are popping in hot springs. Y'all had a great crowd yesterday, I understand. But I felt in the Holy Ghost sitting on this platform that sometimes, man, I'm going to tell you, a spirit of discouragement will come against us preachers. We get up and we smile and we preach our guts out and we hope somebody's going to be back the next night. And we go home and we worry and then we get up and pray and we smile again and preach to you. Wondering what, oh, hallelujah, I'm telling you, revival is coming to Amity, Arkansas. Oh, Robosh, I'm not talking about what's already happened. I'm talking about something that's coming. I want them to come forward, Brother Moses, if this is okay, I want to pray for them today. Y'all stand with me. We're going to pray. I'm going to preach to the Lord willing, but I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, Sister Moses. We're going to pray. I bind in. I'm not saying they're bound by a spirit of discouragement, but I know how I have felt. I know the way I have felt before. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, starting out is tough, but there is a God that when he puts his mighty hand, he he puts his hand up on it. Why don't some of you good brothers help us pray right now? God, I want you to put your hand up. Oh, somebody worship the Lord. Woo, somebody ought to just get full of faith today. I'm going forward. Yes, Jesus. Clap your hands one more time. As you make your way back to your seat. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Deuteronomy, the second chapter. I do not try to just change things up and do that, but I've be honest with you, I don't know how to preach real good, Brother Moat, so I just do what the Lord tells me. That's why I like your pastor coming to preach for us. He just does, he just does just like he's at Hot Springs. Well, the last time he come, I was dealing with some things. I thought, Lord, you're going to have to help me. And man, 
Brother Moats got in the Holy Ghost, and you thought I'd talk to him. And I think everybody else thought I talked to him. Some of them, I believe, are still convinced I talked to him. <laughs> but he was anointed, and we hadn't talked, but the Lord had talked. Amen. Deuteronomy, I'm going to try to hurry. I know this is a special day in everyone's life in America. I hope it is. I still love America. Thank God for America. Deuteronomy, the second chapter, verse 1, then we turn. Took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Now this is Moses reminding the children of Israel their exodus from Egypt. Egypt stands for sin. And then he's reminding them what has happened in their life. He said, we come by the way of the Red Sea as the Lord spake unto me. And we come past Mount Seir many days. Someone say many days. And the Lord spake unto me. Thank God we're hearing a fresh voice. From a preacher when you really, really need to hear from God. Well, that's why it's important to be in church. Oh, you can hear a fresh voice, fresh word from the Lord. And this was the word of the Lord. This is what he spake through Moses. Verse 3, ye have come past this mountain long enough. Turn you northward. The word was, you have come past. This mountain, you've been going around this mountain long enough. It's time to go northward. I'm going to preach from this title today at the Lord to help me if you need a title. And that is Old Circles and New Paths to Victory. Old Circles, or if you want to get technical, leaving Old Circles and stepping on New Paths to Victory. Let's pray. God of heaven, we Come on, let's pray that God will talk to us today. Let's don't be in a hurry. Let's pray that God will talk to us. Oh, let the Holy Ghost talk to us today. The name of Jesus. God bless you. you may be seated. Moses began to remind the children of Israel. It was time again for them to move forward. He begins to remind them of how they were stuck on an 11-day journey. It was taking them year after year to get to where they needed to go. It was because the Bible calls it their evil heart of unbelief that they were stuck in this wilderness. And they were compassing the mountain. They were going around the mountain, Mount Seir. And they were, they were uh, going around once, but not once. And then it was twice and not twice. But year after year, they were in the same area. God still providing the same miracles. He's still giving the manna. He's still giving water from the rock when they need it. But they're still in their same rut. They're still going in circles. Moses gets up and began to remind them. The only way you can go forward is if you leave that circle. He said, you have come past. This is the word for God's people. You've come past that mountain long enough. When I got up. This morning, I did not know what I was going to preach. I began to pray, God, I need to hear from you. Before I went to bed last night, God, you've got to give me a scripture, something to preach to hot springs. And I'm just not much on throwing things together. I'll be honest with you. If God don't give it to me, I don't need to be up here. I'm not that kind of preacher. I can't pull the rabbit out of the hat and make you and all. But I'm telling you, when I got up, the Lord, it was coming out of my mouth this morning. You've come past this mountain long enough. I hope that you will let me preach to you today. I didn't come to slap at anybody. I didn't come to hurt anybody. But I come to preach and to tell somebody you're in a spiritual rut. And this man has been preaching to you. This man is casting a vision of building. I want you to realize that you're in a very critical state. This is when the devil tries to get in the middle of a church. When you start talking vision and the preacher gets in prayer and he gets up and begins to stir young people up and couples up and elders up and 
with vision and casting his vision. And people begin to buy land and they begin to plan about new churches and bigger buildings. The devil, the devil's not happy. It makes him very, very nervous. And so when hell gets nervous, they've got to figure out how to cause us a problem, how to stir up. You know why? Because it's like Sambalad and Tobiah. The devil says, I've got to do something different because if I don't, the reason why the devil wants to fight so hard, if I don't, there's going to be greater victory. Sambalad and Tobiah was sent to Nehemiah. And they said, hey, even if a fox ran up that wall, it wouldn't hold. That was one of their attitudes. The other said, why do we even need a wall? They begin to write to him, come on down off the wall and let's meet in the plain of Ono. And Nehemiah said, oh no, I'm not meeting in Ono. We're going to have revival. I'm not getting off the wall. I want to tell you the devil's will. The devil's plan is to try to get this man and you focus on anything but building. Anything but revival. He'd like to keep you right in here in this nice building. He would like let you think that nothing's wrong, and there's nothing wrong with this building. It's nice, but you do got a problem. You got a bad problem here. There's not enough room. That's a good problem. But it's a bad problem for hell. What the devil would like to do is let a city lay revival lay dormant. He don't mind us talking about revival. He don't mind us singing about revival but when you start having revival and people get stirred up and they're breaking out of their comfort zone the devil says oh no 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 we got to put a cap on this you just beware that while the vision goes forth the devil's job is to sidetrack you he'll either give you a job that'll keep you out of church let me say it again he'll give you a job to keep you out of church well, I'll just listen, put my, my earbuds in and listen to it. It ain't the same. Oh, it ain't the same. He'll get you crossed up with your brother. He'll get you crossed up with your sister. If the devil can get your eyes on flesh during this project, if he can get your eye on the faults of humanity, I'm telling you, I can sit here if I knew it. I can look at my congregation and pick each person apart. I can tell you their faults and their failures, and they can point their finger back and say, yeah, and I know you're human too, and i got a few problems. I know you don't believe that. i got some faults, some fleshly hang-ups that I have to overcome, and you've got to overcome. And if we let the devil get in us, and we let the devil get a hold of our victory, we'll start looking and picking and fighting and when there's a work to be done somebody's got to be willing to break out of a spiritual rut this morning oh it's backed up in the new testament the writer of hebrews said when we have many things to say hard to be uttered seeing you are dull of hearing for when the time notice this you ought to be Teacher, somebody say teacher. teacher. When you ought to be teaching, when you ought to be giving direction, you have need that one teach you again. We're in trouble when we ought to know everything that the pastor's been preaching and we could write it in a book and teach a Bible study. But no, we got to go back and somebody's got to teach us again. I'm not talking about stopping the preacher, I'm talking about going around the same mountain. Oh, you got to get a prayer life. You got to get a prayer life. And for three weeks we pray, and for two months we quit praying. You got to fast. Man, I'll fast two or three weeks, and now I'm going to stop and get carnal. Well, oh, no, now they get to get up and preach it again. Preach somewhere. We've got to get out of our spiritual rut and say, I'm going to have a prayer life. He can preach on prayer, and I'll go deeper, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not going he's not going to be preaching to me when he's talking about not having a prayer life because I'm going to have a prayer life. I'm going to get in communication with Jesus Christ. I'm going to have a deep relationship with God Almighty. 
I remember, I remember people that had been with us 15 or 20 years that my dad had kept praying and kept pushing them to pray. And the church started growing and he didn't have as much one-on-one time. And they took 15 years to realize they didn't have a prayer life. 15 years, 20 years to realize they couldn't live for God without somebody priding them. And you know what God done? God dealt with them for 15 years. And he finally said, I'm taking my hands off. If you can't pray from this day forward, if 15 years of Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night teachings has not established you by now, then I can't keep you. No, you're not part of the bride. I watch main people in our church leave backslide, do things that I never thought was possible for him to do. One of my dad's right-hand men was faithful. His handprints are all over our church. He was the one that, that was supervised in the construction of our church and led our men to victory and building the building. He's sitting in the penitentiary today. A dope dealer. Why? Because he quit doing. He got in a rut. There was some things, there was some things that he didn't conquer. Some things that a pastor said, if you don't get a hold of this. My dad told him years ago, said, brother so-and-so, if you don't get a hold of procrastination, you're going to end up in jail. That don't even make, that don't even sound spiritual. But guess what? He kept going back around that mountain. Kept God will lead you so far, but God will not make you go forward. He'll lead you to a place. It may be his will for a, to allow you to go around the mountain once. It may be a few times, but it's not God's will for you to stay where you've always been. You know what it's time for today? I feel it in the Holy Ghost to challenge you. It's time for every man that's not repented of his sins to step forward and repent. It's time for those that's drugged their feet on getting baptized to make up in their mind, I'm going to live for God and let a pastor baptize you in the name of Jesus. It's time to quit playing around and get serious about getting the Holy Ghost. It's time for new converts to make up your mind. I'm not always going to be a new convert. I don't have to have the pastor's attention 24-7 to make it. I'm going forward. I've got people in my church. You can be seated. A girl and her husband, a wife and husband was at our place last night. She's only been in church four years. You would think she's been in church all her life watching her and talking to her because she's adamant about doing it God's way. And then I've got some people that's been there six or seven, maybe ten years, and they still look like new converts, and they still act like new converts. They still talk like new. They're still going. Oh, yes, they're still going around and doing their own thing like new converts and tripping up. And God said your excuse no more is a new convert stage. You say, God, to go. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. God, to go with you so far as a new convert. And you'll fall and he'll help you up and you'll fall and he'll help you up. But there comes a time God says, you've got to learn how to walk. You've got to learn how to live. You've got to learn how to pray. You've got to learn how to be a big boy. You've got to be a big girl. You've got to get up on your own two feet and live for God. Hey, it's time for revival. It's time for people to walk on their own two spiritual feet and say, I'm going northward. I've got a vision that the man of God's preaching about. I want my mama in church. I want my daddy in church. I want my wife, my husband in church. Be seated. Apostle writes, he said, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful. Let me back up. He said, you ought to be teachers, but one needs to teach you, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You ought not have to go back after two or three years of living for God and figure out the gospel. It ought to be embedded in you so deep within the first two years, three years. It ought to be. And sometimes as a pastor, you can feel like, am I ever getting this across? People living for God and doing right, and then somebody will ask you, 
been in church three years, and they'll ask you something so simple, and you think, now, have you been listening? What do you think I've been preaching about the last six weeks? <laughs> kind of like somebody coming up telling you, you need to go ahead. Brother, we're out of room. Really? <laughs> we're out of room around here? Where you been last Sunday? <laughs> last six months? We got a problem. Man, that ought not to be spiritually. We pop up with these little ones. Now, no question is a bad question if you're sincere, but come on. Come on. You ever seen a baby that's trying to walk? They're learning to walk, but they'd rather crawl because they know how to crawl a lot better. God wants you to learn to crawl. It's God's will as you're a new convert for you to crawl, but you shouldn't stay crawling. And there's a lot of times, pastor has to pick you up and hold your hand. Come on. You ever seen a lazy baby? No, all mine has been hyperactive. I'm telling you, I guess that's a blessing, but they're hyperactive. They want to run and not walk. And there's, there's a problem with that, a spiritual problem, wanting to run when you ought to walk. But God has stages. The Bible says to everything, there is a season. Right. Woo, there's a season. God gives that newcomer season. And don't ever, don't, ever, don't ever fuss about it. Don't ever complain about it. God wants you to learn the principles of the doctrine. But if you've been here five years, it's time to walk. It's time, it's time. You, you shouldn't have to have Brother Moans and Sister Moans to balance you all the time. Well, come on, sit down. Let me talk to you about that. I don't have a note today. I don't know how long we'll be here, but I'll try to make it fast. He preached a good time at my place. So I'm going to preach at least as long as he did. No, I'm teasing. I love it when they come and stretch out and obey God and God. But let me tell you something. The pastor, we got to learn balance. Somewhere we got to learn balance, church. The brother and sister Moats don't have to stretch out our hand. And we're always teeter tottering. And, and man, I. Holy boy, I'm getting off on things I can feel in the spirit right now. You ought, to, you ought to grow up today in your mind and say, I will not be. I, hey, listen, listen. Now, 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 if you're new today, I'm, you don't know me and I don't know you. I'm not after you, okay? I'm after those that's been playing around. They've been playing church. I'm really not after them. I want to help them. I want to see them succeed. Now, he can get up here and fix all this when I'm gone, and it don't matter if I'm on the board or not. He'll do it anyways if he needs to. That board's a signature. I ain't worried about that. But what I, what I, what I want to help somebody with is, is to grow. This church is about to outgrow some people. You better hear me. Some of you have been here for a while, and he's been balancing. We'll, we'll, we'll get specific, preacher. Let me get specific. It's 4th of July, and thank God you're in church. So let's talk about another time when you ain't. <laughs> balancing you out at some time. You know, we got some people, there's nothing wrong with vacation. I just come off a two-week vacation, enjoyed it. That's why I couldn't say no to coming today. I had no excuse. I was rested up and ready. And I appreciate the invitation. But let me, let me tell you something. Some people vacation all the time. They have no balance. And you know, it's, it's funny. It seems like it don't matter if they own their own business and can do their own schedule. It seems like they have to miss Sunday. And then, you know, if they miss Sunday, they go ahead and miss the week. But we're on vacation. I need a break. Sometimes people's unbalanced. Sometimes that people, they're all hooked up in the spirit, but they won't pay their bills. They, they, they get the bill part down and then the good character down, but they fall off the wagon on praying. Where are we going to learn that balance of living for God and being a good Christian man and woman and saying, I'm going forward. I'm not going to let these little things hinder me. When you should be a teacher. Can I, can I just ask you today, can you teach on holiness? Just telling you what a feel today. Or are you still struggling with it? Five years down the road, and you don't mind praying, you don't mind fasting, but that dressing right. Now we you so man, be careful, new people. They can look around and tell you dress different. You're the only one being fooled. They're not fooled, they know what we do and what we believe. But it's hungry people love holiness. 
hunger, let me tell you something, the hungry people, you won't, you can't offend sincere brothers and sisters. They always want to go forward. They always want to go up and let the pastor preach and let them go up at their pace and what he decides is right. But us that have been walking, it's amazing the people that have been raised, the young people that have been raised in church can give Bible studies, but they can't live it. I had a friend, he was around 20 years old before he ever got the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, all through his teenage years, he'd give Bible studies if he wanted to. Raised a grandpa that would preach the gospel. That, that's where some of us are spiritually. We know it. We know how to act it. We know how to say it. But where are we spiritually? Are we just going around the mountain? We, ladies, we still got the scissors in our hair? Been five years, and man, we still struggling trimming that hair and dyeing that hair. And oh, that, hey, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You explain this to the world, and it, hair makes sense because it's in the Bible. You know, hair is the byproduct of the home because that's where the home is set up. Oh, my, my, my. I'm telling you, some things have been on my spirit. I didn't know why they've been in my mind, but I feel them right now. He said, God is the head. Then he speaks of Christ because we are the body of Christ. You have the spirit that is in control, controlling the church. The man of God that preaches and casts the vision. And then he said, you have fathers. And they cut their hair. <laughs> How do you get off on this on a Sunday morning? Fourth of July. They, they cut their hair because they're representing Jesus Christ. And the woman does not cut her hair. She don't trim it. She don't burn it. Why? It's a submission thing. Because she represents her husband. Hold on. And then children are under the parents. And so what you have is a beautiful picture. Apostle Paul said, this is the ordinance that I received of the Lord. But a man, it's a shame for him to have long hair. When a man has long hair, he offers a tainted image of Jesus Christ. When a woman cuts her hair and won't leave her hair alone and don't present it godly and uncut, she, pre she presents a tainted image of the home. And we know there's issues in the home. Man, I got two or three on my side. Man, you don't have to be on my side. This is the word of God. That's why I'm preaching to you today. If it's been five years or whatever the pastor deems it, he's been preaching these kind of things. You ought to be helping me, not struggling today. How long are you going to play around, sister, with holiness when it is in the book? It's the distinguishing of the genders. Man, we had, you can be seated. We, Brother Motes, we had someone to come, someone by, and I got, I'm probably online today, so I got to be careful. But someone that hunted, or that I hunted by, a prominent family in this area, a friend of mine, all of a sudden, they're an elderly friend. They called my, my uh, they, they called Brother Matt Freeman and said, We need a Bible study. We got some questions. I was out of town, so they met at Dad's. The day I come into town, I come by to see them. They said, Your dad has enlightened us. We just asked him everything. Some people say, oh, don't tell them those things about the hair. Don't tell them about separation. They know we do it. They, it'd be nice to know why. <laughs> We're not a cult. What we do right here is in the word of God. Woo. You know what they said? They said, well, what about the distinction? He got on the hair and the distinction between the genders. We got on women wearing pants and, and oh yeah. Man, if you've been in church for some time, ladies, and you're still struggling with that, let me tell you, that's the spirit of our hour. And that woman I'm talking about, she don't have, she said, I need the Holy Ghost. That's what I've been missing. Living for God all her life as much as she knew. 
And she said, there's something missing. And they begin to explain the gospel. But I'm going to tell you, the whole package goes with the gospel. Because when they got the answer on the Holy Ghost, they said, explain to me holiness. Begin to tell them. And that doctor said, that's the problem with America right now. He said, that's why we got transgender. That's why there's so much homosexuality. Nobody's drawing a line and saying, this is where I stand. I'm going northward. I'm not going to come pass about the mountain. Go oh, clap your hands. Woo, hallelujah. The writer said, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on. Someone say, go on. Go on unto perfection. There has to be something in a man and a woman that they really love God that says, I am not going to stay where I'm at. I want to go forward. I'm going northward. I'm going unto perfection. Oh, hallelujah. In closing today, in Genesis, we see a favorite character of mine, old Jacob. Boy, he was a rascal. <laughs> Some of you laughing, you know. He was a rascal when you got in church too, wasn't he? I can only imagine where I'd be if I wasn't raised in church. Oh, man. Somebody asked me where they thought, where, you know, that's kind of a dumb, I hate to say that, but my mama would correct me. She's here. You shouldn't say dumb in the pulpit. That really is a, that's a dumb thing to talk about. What would I do if I was in the world? I don't go there. I told him, I said, there ain't no telling. I've been real mad before. I'd probably be in prison. <laughs> I've been aggravated to the point I'd probably done something crazy. Oh, you're shaking your head. You probably have too. <laughs> this world's full of spirits. It don't no telling where we'd be without God. No Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, he come out. The hill grabber ended up being the deceiver. And I don't have a long time to preach this, just a few minutes. But Brother Moach, God had Jacob's attention. <laughs> Woo! Brothers and sisters, God knew where Jacob was at. He knew there was a sincere man. I'm glad God didn't give up on me. I'm glad that if, if we're compassing a certain mountain, that God has sent a voice. Someone maybe you don't even know real good that says, hey, you're going around the mountain. And it's not the will of God anymore. You know what that mountain meant? I looked up the name of Seir, Mount Seir, and it may have many names, but this first name it gave it, it meant rough. Boy, when you're a new convert, some things are rough. But it ought not stay that way. It's somewhere we got to plane out on smooth waters and learn how to live for God. Yeah. Jacob, he was the deceiver. And what a guy. What a guy. Oh, Jacob. He'd done his brother wrong, tricked his brother, waited till he was hungry and in need and took advantage of the situation. No doubt God was looking and thinking, well, I got a plan for you, old boy, but you're going to have to change. So God sent him to school. If you're going to go to school with God, you're going to have to buckle up because God knows where it hurts. He said, if you're going to go to school with me, buddy, and you're going to be, you're going to take Abraham's blessing. No, he had the blessing of his father, but if God was still behind it, if you're going to do it, I'm going to send you through Bible school. You're going to go meet the deceiver. And so the deceiver met the great deceiver. Matter of fact, he married into it. Oh, yeah, and he found out that he wasn't the only one. But Laban could deceive even better than Jacob. And I'm sure you know the story. We don't have to preach it all, but God started dealing with him. You've got to go home. You get it. Somebody ought to go back to your roots today. Somebody ought to go back to that love for prayer. That love when you first got in church, go home to that feeling, I'll do anything they preach. If it's in the Bible, I'll do it. Let me tell you something. This man ain't going to preach something that ain't in the Bible. We don't have time for that. But if you can find it in the scripture, preacher, preach it to me. Perfect.
affect me. The Bible said he chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe the fivefold ministry. He gave it for the perfecting of the church. Some of you I look today, and you didn't look like this a few years ago, but somebody let preaching work on them. Oh, thank God. Preaching work on them. Well, Jacob, life preached to Jacob. And he finally is going to go home. There's only one problem. When you've done things wrong for so long, you've got to go face yourself and your problems. You know what's amazing? People that can pass about the mountain is so much like Jacob. Jacob, by the most, he got to a point in his life that he wanted to go across Jabbok. You know what Jabbok meant? It meant pouring forth. I want to go to where it's pouring forth in my life. So many people are living out of the will of God. They're living for God to a certain extent. But they're out of the will of God because it's not pouring forth. It's just a little trickle blessing over here. Just a little bit of blessings. But once in a while there's a gush and they get a financial blessing. And they, well, there's a little gush and they get a healing. And, but it's always a struggle. It's always tough, never pouring forth. And you know what I've seen with people? They can help and teach others how to get to where they want to go, and they can't get there themselves. Think about it. Struggle paying your tithes and offering. Five or ten years, it's just every time you get in a financial bind, and because you won't manage, you go back to struggling with financial Decisions like paying your tithes off the top, giving God His, giving free will offerings. You can't do it because the management ain't right. And instead of perfecting the management, we say, well, we're, we're going to do our best and we pay our tithes and we do a little bit and get a little blessing over here. And there's a little gush of water because we did right for six months and then guess what? We mismanage and here we are again. And it keeps us oppressed, keeps the blessing out of our life. But you let somebody walk in a new convert, and you know we could give them scripture and verse how they ought to pay their tithes and offer them brothers and sisters the blessing to be upon you, and it'll be pouring forth in your life. But deep down, we're still going back around here, and they don't know it. We may get the envelope out, but we ain't fooling God. We're still struggling. Aren't you tired? Of staying in the same place, that old rut. I come to help somebody. I'm almost done today. Jacob finally had to face his past and face all the rude things he'd done, all the wrong he had done. You know what he had to do? He had to get alone. You're not going to find this help in a crowd of people. You're not going to get total deliverance from your circles in a self-help program. It's going to be between you and Almighty God. And you know what's sad is Jacob said, I'm going to help my family cross. Every one of them, young brother Mochi got, I don't know what to address you. I feel like I'm in God. They used to say, what do I call you? We're going to give you a nickname, ain't we? We'll let y'all decide that. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I, I ain't the smartest guy, but I ain't that dumb. <laughs> but man, he helps his family across. Brother Mochi says, here goes the children and the wife and well, the wives, he, he wasn't that smart. He had several wives. and <laughs> That'll preach, won't it? <laughs> Some of you smiling say, it's your will. But he got the wives across and his children across, and he's sitting by himself, caught up in his old circle. He's not Israel yet. He's in fear to go face his past. You know what his past was? Esau. He said, oh, God, how am I going to do this? And I can just see Jacob as he lays down, come to music, as he lays down all of a sudden. Can you imagine a man coming in your room at night? Somebody said, well, why didn't he ask him a question? I wouldn't ask questions if somebody comes in my room. I don't care how big or small there's going to be a fight. Maybe some fireworks. But there's going to be a fight, and we don't have to ask questions. This guy's getting ready to go to bed now, no doubt. And all of a sudden, he don't know it's an angel of the Lord. It looks like a man, and it jumps up on him. 
He don't have time to ask why are we fighting. He just begins to fight. And somewhere in the fight, he realizes that this is dependent on my blessing, my victory. And if I'm going to tell you, if you're willing to wrestle with your past and face your issues and your hang-ups, oh, don't play like you don't have them. I have them. You have them. But you can overcome them by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you're willing to wrestle today, if you're willing to square your shoulders and say, I am not, I'm not going to be a bad manager no more. I'm not going to be a liar no more. Well, you know, there's some people that do good living for God, but they get shady in their business deals. I'm not going to do that no more. I'm going to face my past. I'm going to face where that lying spirit came from. You can quit blaming your grandpa now. We're in the biggest blame generation. We we'll have this problem. We got a pro We got all kinds of diagnoses for every little hang-up we have. Well, my great grandfather, they said he was a habitual liar, and that's what I've got to be the rest of my life. Not according to the book. You may have to face your lying problem. I've seen some good apostolic people have a lying problem. They get back in that circle of life and get carnal, and they just have a little trouble telling the truth when they get in a bind, but it ain't God's will. You can break out today. Today is your day. You're not, hear me today. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Some of you is going to get off the bandwagon in the building project if you don't get a hold of what I'm saying. You've got to get victory here so you can carry it over. Because this thing's about to grow. For the most is not going to be able to put his hand on you and hold your hand all the time. There's going to be new converts he has to pick up and new people he's got to pray through. And you ought to be the ones helping and teaching and praying and letting Brother Mo work, work out from under Brother Mo. Let's stand. And Jacob begins to wrestle. People say, I don't matter what man's, man thinks about me. Let, let me tell you the scripture. He said, you have found favor and you're going to have power with God. And man, it's not God's will for you to wrestle all your life and feel like a failure. And I just can't get up and I just can't get over. I'm telling you, you can go to victory. You can go northward today if you make up your mind. Jacob began to wrestle and he said, I'm not letting go until you bless me. But guess what? When all was said and done, he got to step across that brook. He had sent his family. Well, I, I just keep getting hung up on this today. Somebody, you, your family's blessed. Your wife's doing good, brother. You're so proud of your children in church. But deep down, you know there are some hang-ups you're still battling. There's still a pornography problem. You're still slipping around. You're addicted to watching Hollywood. And it's taking your victory. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of slipping around and still being bound by the spirit of nicotine? You don't have to do that. You've got to face your past. Don't blame it on your dad. Don't blame it on your grandma, husband, or wife, or children. It's not, it's not a complex. It's an issue that God can fix in the spirit. If you make up your mind from this day forward, I'm not going back around that mountain. I'm going on a new trail. I'm going to follow my pastor to victory. Well, anybody want to go on a new trail to victory? Raise your hand as Pastor Moats comes right now. Oh, God, we need your help. Lift up your voice. Oh, God, help us to go forward. God loves you. It's not his will that any perishes. He wants you to go to revival. Oh, let's love you. Oh, why don't we come gather around as many as can come? Come on, God is drawing people to a higher level. Oh, I've been feeling it in my spirit. Let your sweet aroma my life. Come on, if you need the Holy Ghost, come on. You need a miracle, come on. You need God to help you, come on. Show me. Ah, ya, 